Hey. Back in 2015, the movie Star Wars The Force Awakens came out, and Disney and Hewlett Packard decided they would put out a special edition laptop. And so Star Wars is really big in my family, and to attest to that, this is my wife's laptop, the Star Wars Hewlett Packard Special Edition. So this thing is pretty cool, 15 inches, it's got a glowing keyboard, it's got special edition content that HP preloaded on it, an Intel i5 processor, it has an Nvidia video card, and it's got sound by Bang & Olufsen. So overall, pretty cool. Something you'd have at home, but probably wouldn't rock in the boardroom. Compared to my laptop, the thing's a tank. Mine's 1.28 kilograms. This is the Xiaomi Mi Air. This is what I take around from day to day. And hers is 2.79 kilograms, so almost double. When I borrowed my wife's computer last summer, I absolutely didn't realize how slow it had gotten until I started using it, and it was agonizing. The culprit was the hard drive that Hewlett Packard put inside it. To cut costs, HP used an older technology. It was a mechanical drive, and the technology was probably about 10 years old. When it comes to computers, all of the components work in unison, and so the slowest component slows down the entire system. The HP Star Wars Edition laptop came preloaded with sounds and wallpaper, movie clips, some comic books, lots of stuff that's of high value to the Star Wars collector. But it also came with a lot of trial software and ad software that those types of computers are notorious for having preloaded. This is new territory for Mac users. But if you buy a Windows machine from one of the big manufacturers, they love to partner with software companies and load your brand new computer up with adware, trial software, and basically junk that times out after a while. I'm looking at you, Norton Antivirus. And you see this with cell phones too, especially on the Android side of things. If you've ever used a Google Pixel, it's a native Android experience. But if you've used a Samsung phone from TELUS, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I could probably go for coffee and back by the time Windows loads on Jade's computer. And while it's cool and it's the Star Wars Collector Edition and it's got some street cred, the thing takes forever to load. So when your old computer gets slow, you don't have to toss it in the recycle bin. There's lots of cheap and easy upgrades you can do yourself to get it back up to speed. You can add or replace more RAM. You can make space on the hard drive by using a cloud service to back up your stuff. Or you could even change out some of its internals to make it bigger and faster. So your computer's memory, brains, and storage are all linked together. And the slowest part takes down the whole system. In this case, the hard drive was agonizingly slow, but the rest of the system was peppy. And so that drive was probably acceptable in 2015, but in 2018, we can do better. Enter a newer kind of technology called a solid state drive. Old drives were mechanical. Solid state drives are like the flash memory you put in your phones or your cameras. They're not mechanical and they're a heck of a lot faster. In 2015, solid state drives were just simply too expensive for the average person. But like anything technology related, over time, things just get cheaper and faster. And that's the case with SSD drives today. I started my journey by looking up the specs on HP's website and looking at some teardowns some people had put online with photos of the internals so I could figure out what drive to replace it with and what would be compatible. The new SSD drives are 10 times faster than the old mechanical drives in Jade's laptop. So I gave myself a budget of about $100 to see what I could replace it with. So Memory Express has an additional $8 flat rate for shipping. For a change, I decided to order from Newegg.ca. They had the same drive Memory Express did, but they offered free shipping. And it came two days ahead of time, so I'll definitely order from them again. So the process was actually really easy. It wasn't as terrifying as people might think. Armed with only a screwdriver, I flipped over the computer, and I unscrewed the case screws to pull the back off. Before I could do that, I pulled out the DVD-ROM drive, When's the last time you saw one of those? And then I was able to take the case off just by loosening a few clips. So a little disclaimer, anytime you work on electronic components, you should ground yourself because you have static electricity built up inside of your body that'll probably fry some components. Rubbing a balloon on your hair, rubbing the socks on the carpet, touching the components to zap them before you start are all not great ideas. With the computer open, I was able to locate the drive, and it only had one single clip and two rubber mounts that attached to the side of the original drive. Swapping them out was just as simple as taking those rubber mounts, putting them on the new drive, and reattaching the clip in the old drive's position. Once it was seated, we were done and ready to just to reverse the procedure and put it back together. So it sounds simple, right? You just unscrew the case, swap out the drive, swap out the mounts, and you're good to go. 
Yes and no. When we powered the computer back on, we saw that of course it didn't have an operating system, but it was smart enough to tell me that it had a new drive. I knew I wanted a fresh Windows install. Microsoft has something called a media creation tool, and I'll put the link in the description. It allows you to take the most recent version of Windows and put that on a USB key. I got really lucky with this install. When the computer booted off the USB key, it didn't ask for my serial number for Windows 10. If you need to activate Windows with your old serial number, you can cut and paste a command in a program called PowerShell, and it'll just return whatever the registered Windows key on that computer is. Writing that down before you turn it off and start this is a great idea. So that original drive was slow, and it was making the computer slow, but it's not garbage. Number one, I can still use it and pull the data off it. So HP had put a bunch of collector's edition Star Wars stuff on the original laptop. Sounds, wallpapers, themes, screensavers. I've still got those and can read those off the original drive. But another thing I have is now I have a one terabyte drive that is great for data backup. It might not be great to run the day-to-day -day parts of the computer, but I put it in an enclosure and now I can put photos and music and things that I don't need to access all the time to it. And one terabyte of storage is actually quite a bit. So when I finished the Windows install, I removed the USB key and let the computer come up on its own. And holy cow, is it ever fast compared to how it was. That SSD is probably more than 10 times faster than the original drive. And now when that computer boots on its own, it's totally ready to do the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. It's a Star Wars joke. And that's it. For $100, an hour of my time, and a screwdriver, I took a computer that wasn't being used anymore and was destined for the recycle bin into something that was completely zippy, ready to game on, ready to web browse on, and ready to be a day-to-day -day computer back again, just by reusing that old hard drive and swapping it out for something newer. So I'm a computer geek, and this is easy for me, but honestly, it was just some screws and a clip, and you can do it too. It's gonna make you feel like you have a brand new computer. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.